Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, what a stark contrast it is. If you go back to look through our videos the past couple weeks, it's like mud brown to white to brown to white. <laughs> Such is life in West Virginia. Okay, well, today we're going to continue our mobile coop build. We're going to start erecting the walls and set those on the trailer. And I shared in the previous video in this uh, playlist, I shared the design. So now we're going to execute based on that design. But what we're going to do is we're going to bring the trailer up here and we're going to build it where we worked on it last time in front of the driveway or in front of the garage in front of the house so we can assemble in the garage come out and put the walls up here take advantage of a the sun since we're on the south facing side of our valley over here is the dark side of the moon and then also get an incredible amount of thermal mass from the face of this brick so this afternoon, that'll be really nice and toasty. We'll probably have melted out by the time we're done. And it'll be a little bit warmer, a little bit more enjoyable to, to work in. We're just below freezing, um, but I think we're supposed to not get above freezing today. But we'll see how much this thaws out. All right, I gotta go get the trailer in the wood, which is down in the snowy abyss. All right, so we got our trailer up here with the wood, wood off, got it sorted. So I uh, got our longer boards here, uh, the top plate, seal bottom plate and top plate for the sides. And of course the rafters over here are all of our studs that got leaning up against the house, uh, the brick, the heat, hopefully we'll make them thaw out a little quicker and uh, we'll get to work. If you're, if you're just jumping in on the series or you're new to the channel, real quick, mobile chicken coop, trying to make it light. We've got a lot of hills to climb in different places to get around on our property. We uh, built this out of milled lumber. This is a, a frame completely made out of milled lumber, recycled axle from an old horse trailer that got crushed by a tree from my brother. And even our lumber is scaled down. We're doing a, instead of two by fours or even you know, store-bought size two by fours, we're doing one and a quarter by threes. Just scaling everything down to keep the weight low. Um, here's a schematic of the drawing uh, that we did in SketchUp so you get a rough idea of what our frame's gonna look like, or our structure's gonna look like with a single slope roof on top. So let's get to work.
Look, you don't have that triangle against the board. Yeah, see, see that big difference there? You always got to make sure that that is zeroed out on the wood. <clears throat> So this one I'm taking with me, this one is going to be your template. So keep going, you got three more to do. Cut away, Montesquieu. We got the front wall in place and we're framing up the back where we're going to have the drop down door for the uh, egg access. And yes, if you're wondering, I'm going for a patriotic washwoman today. So let me show you what we're doing here. So we're using milk crates as nesting boxes and of course we got the wall laid out here on the ground on the concrete and we want just a little bit of clearance there and have a shelf the first nesting box will sit pretty much on the floor second nesting box a couple inches ahead so i'm just measuring that out i've got eight egg cartons or milk cartons egg carton oh my oh my goodness they're milk crates eight milk crates so we'll have two rows of four and then at the top here we'll have a little i'm going to put a header in so we can have uh, some structure there to hold the roof since this is a load bearing wall. But this gives me an idea of the layout. My help bailed out on me to get some uh, lunch and because he was cold. So, you know, teenagers, they start, they start fast out of the gate, but they just don't have the stamina. All right, buddy, so for these long walls, we need 39 and three quarter tall. So that should get, should be able to get two out of each board, right? Because mm -hmm. I think these are like 87 inches, something like that. So go ahead and start, if you start putting them down and cutting them to length, you should get two out of each and I'll start framing up the walls. So go ahead and start, don't forget to square the ends and get two.
See what I'm using. See how that there's a little bit of space there in that gap, a little bit of gap there. So I pull that out, and that's what this gives me room to be able to screw down into. So that makes it nice and square. All right, so Cam and I got the four sides in place. We got everything plumb and square, believe it or not. I do have a little bit of an issue. You know, this is the thing on YouTube. You normally don't show all your mistakes, but this is the, I think you go back and see the first video where I built the frame, the, um, this main rail of the trailer frame. It's a, what is it, a two by 10, true two by 10 milled poplar. It had a little bit of a curve to it. So it drops in the back corner. So see if you can see this drop. <laughs> it's a little bit lower in that corner because the whole frame drops. So um, I think that's definitely where we're going to put our downspout for rain catchment on that end versus the other. <laughs> so it can, it can definitely have gravity assisted uh, opportunities there. But other than that, very solid. I forgot to put that rafter board up there. <laughs> Very solid and uh, like I said, plumb and square. So square as we can be with that back corner. So we're gonna check out the rafters and uh, I like to visualize it so I can figure out exactly the overhangs I want. Hold that. <laughs> Man, I don't know if you guys can see that on the camera, but you can see the ice line on the trees. Look how the sun's lighting it up. It looks like it's made out of crystal. That's gorgeous. All right, so we got it all framed out. The next step, of course, would be to add the purlins and the metal roof. I haven't ordered the metal roof yet, so I gotta get that ordered. And then the siding material, which we talked about in a previous episode, is going to be um, some corrugated sign material for the sides. And then, of course, chicken wire in the open area. So this front portion here will be open and airy. The back portion will be closed in uh, to give them the shade they want to, to lay an eggs. So with this back opening, this is where we'll have a gate or door that'll drop down. And then you can reach in two shelves worth of milk crates for um, nesting boxes. So you can reach in and grab those without having to go inside. It's about all the way, every time I design things, it, it works about the way where I'm going to, I'm gonna crack my head right on that metal roof, probably slice open my forehead a couple times by the time I put it on there. So. I don't know why I do that. I build like I'm a five foot six guy versus a six foot three guy. So what are you gonna do? Let's see over here, yeah. Just barely clear that part. <laughs> I'll make sure I'm not wearing my heels when I go out to take care of the chickens. <laughs> Went ahead and got my milk crates ordered because there's nowhere around here that we can find where you can just get milk crates used or anything, or they want a fortune for them. So I uh, actually got these from Tractor Supply. They were uh, like 20 cents cheaper than the big milk crate uh, supplier online, but uh, the shipping to get 
eight milk crates in for, from that company is like $36. So with Tractor Supply, of course, you could have it shipped to the store and pick it up. So we've got eight of those. And then, of course, pine shavings. That's for something else, another project. But I'm um, going to go ahead and head off the hill, put this to rest, and take care of my pigs. Say goodnight, Cam. Bet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, y'all take care.